Right here on this table is the absolute very best tactical shotgun you can buy for the money. No, it's not a Mossberg 930. No, it's not a Benelli. This right here is going to be the Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. We're gonna cover all the features of this shotgun and I'm gonna to explain to you why I personally believe that this is the absolute best tactical shotgun you can buy for the money. If you're familiar, Beretta had the A300 and the A390 series of shotguns for a very, very long time. It is a very proven action. Well, they went and put it in a tactical shotgun, put a shorter 18 and a half inch barrel on here with a seven round tube on here, and then give it a gray stair coat. And on top of all that, manufacture it in the United States of America. Previously, Beretta shotguns, Benelli shotguns, and Franke shotguns pretty much solely made in Italy. Obviously, they've done a wonderful job at making high end, high performing shotguns. That, in my opinion, best shotguns in the world. Will you buy a quality shotgun every single time you buy one of those? 100%. Is it likely gonna be better than the competition? Yes, it will be. I've seen the 930 series of shotguns malfunction time and time again when I shot three gun. I've seen them malfunction when they get dirty. They just frankly, in my opinion, don't perform like they're touted to be. And I frankly sometimes also don't understand how somebody could go out and spend more money on that shotgun than this one when you know that you can get this shotgun and trust it. The action on here is not like the 1301. The 1301 uses a rotating bolt head gas operated design, which has like a little buffer up here in the front, ports the gas out the front, and is a faster overall action. Uh, frankly, on that one, you can't necessarily outshoot it because of the recoil and things like that. And really on this one, I don't think we're gonna be able to do that either. Cause again, I have shot A300s and A390s and it's a very fast operating action. The bolt on here is stiffer than what you get on like in a 1301 or your Benelli or your Franke shotguns. However, it's not hard to do because it has an oversized charging handle here from the factory. It's a very nice charging handle. There's no reason to change it whatsoever. The 1301s had it. My 1301 competition I had had that. Um, that 1301 competition shotgun I had, 2,000 rounds to that shotgun. I didn't clean it one single time and it never malfunctioned one single time. I fired birdshot slugs heavy rounds, I mean, just name it, it went through there and it functioned flawlessly. This one, we'll shoot a bunch of bird shot, we'll shoot reduced recoil slugs, we'll shoot reduced recoil buckshot, we'll shoot regular buckshot, we'll shoot regular slugs, and we'll even shoot some three inch magnums through here as well. The bolt release on here, what you have is a magazine cutoff. That magazine cutoff, what it does or what it allows it to do is actually release a round from the tube itself back into underneath the loading gate, release it back, but you can lock the bolt back with that button because it ultimately locks the action. Now releasing it, the button on here, has an oversized lever up here for you and it's easy to hit. You can get it with either hand, easy to do, because on some of the older shotguns, the older designs from Beretta, they had a very small button and that's very common on your upland bird hunting shotguns. However, this has oversized controls, which are perfect for patrol use, duty use, or a tactical shotgun in your home. So outside of those oversized controls, you have an oversized front of the trigger guard safety on here. Um, personal preference for me for shotguns and auto-loading shotguns in general, I actually prefer that trigger guard safety to be behind the trigger itself. So ultimately as I'm coming down to the trigger, I hit that safety and I do it. I find it to be a touch on the faster side. Now granted, if you go finger in front of the trigger guard or something like that, you know how you learn a lot of the tactical type stuff, it's a little bit different because it's up there on the front and you kind of come down on it. So it's not bad, it's in a good position, it's oversized, easy to hit crossbow style safety. The trigger itself, good for a shotgun. It's not really for precision work. However, not a high breaking weight or anything like that and very, very serviceable. Now, grip textures here on this shotgun, they're good. I mean, if you're looking for grip textures on a factory shotgun without any stippling on it whatsoever, these are probably the best in the market. If I could have this check ring on my bird hunting shotguns, my deer slug gun, I would. But this stuff, good. On the rear here, you do have spacer program that Beretta uses, you can change your length of pull for the stock. The stock itself has a rubberized butt pad on here. Recoil wise, could be pretty similar for your 12 gauge shotguns, not overly aggressive because it's a gas operated shotgun. And in addition to that, this is light. This is a very light shotgun, which is good. I definitely prefer a lightweight shotgun using an alloy receiver, a good steel barrel on here versus a heavyweight steel receiver and all that stuff. So this has a good overall weight to it. And it's very handy, very easy to maneuver. A couple things I want to also add here, we'll go into the full setup we have because this thing is set up pretty slick. Bottom here, you can add a QD socket on the bottom, and then there's QD sockets up here on the front on your barrel clamp. Again, barrel clamp is there for that seven round tube. 
And then you also have M-lock sections up here on the fore end as well. M-lock is on the three, six, and nine o'clock positions on here. You see we have an HRT AWS light. This is an 18650 with their Mark III head. So very bright light, has a little bit of a wider spill versus their tighter pattern for the AWS, the full power one. So it's a good light for this. It's easy to get with that omnidirectional ODA thing here from Valhalla Tactical. So it's good on there. Outside of the light and the M-lock slots on the side here, they actually do give you a Velcro strip that you can put on there. You see we've added an S-TAC shell holder on here. That's gonna be a six round shell holder. Good overall idea and system behind this. If you're familiar with some of your firm, rigid plastic or metal shell holders like GGG Tactical and some of the other ones, those are okay. However, the springs in those will wear out. I'm very familiar with them. I have one in an 870 for our duty shotguns at work. They suck, the shells fall out of them all the time and I absolutely frankly hate them. I would rather have an attachment like this that costs like less than $20 and you can replace it every once in a while when you need to. However, the Velcro on there is good. Uh, Velcro and the bungee system type like that will retain your shells very well with 12 gauge recoil. On the top, it does come with a picatinny rail from the factory. So if you do want to mount a standard red dot, you can do that. You can mount anything you want on that pick rail. However, we went and switched it out for the reptilian mount with the Acro footprint. And you'll see on here, we have a Steiner MPS. What's really sweet about mounting the Steiner MPS or an Acro or even like the, the optic from Lead Steel Arms is with that footprint, it's very low and you get full co-witness with your iron sights here on the shotgun. What's nice about that is that obviously 12 gauge has a lot of recoil. If your red dot was to fail on you, obviously Steiner and the Acro from Aimpoint are very good red dots or anything else you put on there, is very good. However, if it was to fail, your battery's dead, you still have good ghost ring iron sights with a red fiber optic front sight up there. I find it hard to really, let's say, push somebody to say, go buy a 1301 over this shotgun because the 1301, as nice as it is, as nice as the bolt is and all that stuff, this system on here is so proven from Beretta that you can trust your life to this system without really even shooting around through just because of how well they've designed it, how long it's been around. Do I advocate for that? No, not whatsoever. I think you should definitely go out and shoot your guns a bunch before you ever trust your life to them. However, you can definitely trust what Beretta is putting out. So let's get out on the range. We'll shoot the crap out of this thing and you guys will get to see how the A300 Ultima Patrol runs. First eight rounds of the Beretta a300 Ultima Patrol, she rocks. Ain't no doubt about that. Just a good running shotgun overall. Let's shoot this thing a crap ton more. For starters, that was reduced recoil, double lot buck, Remington ammunition there. So obviously function flawlessly out of the box, Remington, double lot buck, reduced recoil. I dubbed that the shotgun build drill because with double lot buck, at seven yards, you are gonna absolutely destroy the target with only two rounds, um, destroying the target as well as a threat. Uh, it's just very, very capable. Uh, shotguns get slept on a lot because of how effective a rifle can be or even a pistol at close quarters and things like that. But a shotgun, they rock. Good lock back and everything like that at a reduced recoil. What I can tell you guys is the reduced recoil rounds out of this shotgun very manageable recoil and all that, but we tried to shoot these through a Benelli M4, and that gun will not function with these Remington reduced recoil buckshot. However, through this gun, functions flawlessly. Extremely common rounds for law enforcement. Uh, pretty much anybody can get them. However, these rounds in general like this are extremely common for law enforcement. And if it's not the Remington stuff, you're probably looking at Winchester or even Federal. And this gun functions with that. Again, like I said, the M4 we did a review on, it would not function with double lot buck reduced recoil rounds. That oversized or extra large button on there is very easy to get with gloved hands. Again, it's about 35 degrees, a little bit of rain. And then your enlarged loading port here and the gate itself is really nice. Now the gate on the bottom of the A300 doesn't have big hooks like Benelli shotguns do. Um, some folks in three gun world, they call it Benelli thumb because as you're loading your rounds in there, your thumb would come back, catch on that and it would tear the crap out of it. Now this, you're not gonna have that issue. In addition to that, I had a 1301 before they started doing this stuff. So I took a Dremel to it and opened up that loading gate and made that port a lot wider and open. And it was honestly probably about this, this let's say overall space. And now this one, it's plenty open enough. In fact, you're just above where the actual follower is. 
We shoot the steel, we're about 20 yards now on steel with the shotgun, the Steiner MPS and that Rotelia mount is really nice. Really a good clear sight picture. However, if I need to, I can easily co-witness. Really the heritage behind Beretta shotguns and how they, let's say they point, which if you're not familiar with bird hunting and things like that, or even rabbit hunting, how shotguns point and how they come up and they shoulder is very important. Remington shotguns, Savage, Mossberg, and some of those, they don't generally point as well because they're just not really that heritage and how well Beretta, Benelli, and Franke has perfected it. And this shotgun in general for pointing the shotgun, coming up on target and shouldering a shotgun is very quick and very easy to do. In addition to that, they've shortened the stock on this compared to some of their upland shotguns, which you need a shorter stock, especially if you're somebody wearing body armor or a plate carrier or something like that because a lot of times even with AR, you'll see you can't run that stock as back as far as you might want. So running a little closer, it's more comfortable. And this thing is fit perfectly for that. And being able to talk upon that because that's what I do for a living makes it nice to be able to make that judgment and say this thing would be easy to handle with body armor on. We're set back here at 50 yards now. I have reduced recoil Winchester Ranger, low recoil slugs. Uh, these ones here have not shot them through here. Let's see how they do. Uh, again, we're at 50 yards with that Steiner MPS. I got four slugs total, and my guess is it shoots just fine. The next rounds I want to shoot out of it, these are going to be Federal Premium Tactical Double Out Buck, two and three quarter shells. It's good to test out different kinds of ammo when you're shooting a tactical shotgun, duty shotgun, patrol shotgun. Um, because not all shotguns will run all rounds. I've owned a Benelli Super Vinci. That sucker wouldn't run anything, let's say low brass. It wouldn't run any light dove loads or anything like that. Now, my Franke that I have, it runs everything. The Benelli M4, it will not run everything. In fact, it will not shoot low recoiling rounds whatsoever. And it will not shoot like low brass dove loads. Really shooting nice. Uh, this setup, I really can't complain about it at all. I mean, it's phenomenal. Uh, if you're a law enforcement officer and you have the ability to e A, get one of these shotguns and B, mount a red dot up here, highly recommend the Steiner MPS or the Aimpoint Acura up here. It's really nice. It's a small, compact platform. Very easy to see, very easy to pick up. In addition to that, if you're out there shooting slugs at distance, if you have to, or something like that, you're not having to line up the sights, you're just shooting a red dot like you normally would. And it's nice. And just to that, it's very quick target acquisition, two eyes open and all that stuff. Again, at work, we have Remington 870s. They're smaller, like 14 inch ones. And you have to line up the sights with it if you want to shoot slugs accurately. And overall, that shotgun is just so rudimentary when you compare it to such a fine running shotgun as this Beretta A300 Patrol. For hunting shotguns in general for myself, I always like to take them out, throw a bunch of different rounds through it, see what performs the best, see what makes sure everything I may be hunting with performs. Obviously for a duty shotgun, it's really no different at the end of the day. And in fact, if this thing's gonna run, these are Winchester Super Targets. These are a light load, these are like a trap load. So if this thing will run all these, there's really no reason it won't run ultimately anything you put through it because these are like a low brass, cheap rounds, crappy. Uh, bird shot in general, you can get practice in shooting these instead of shooting expensive buckshot. You get pretty much the same effect because ultimately when you're shooting buckshot and you're at close range, that wad destroys the target far more sometimes than even just the buckshot itself. And so, you, like I said, you can get practice in with your bird shot. So this thing you can practice with bird shot, it's a great way to practice with your duty gun. All eight rounds flawlessly. You guys just saw here, I'm shooting the head swinger here on a target. We're at about, let's say 30 feet and no issues whatsoever actually moving that head swinger around. Very easy to do on a steel target. And again, you're getting practice in shooting cheap ammunition that you can get ultimately for $7 for a box of 25 versus some of your buckshot, you're buying a box of five at $20 or $10, whatever it might be. And you get the train and this gun functions with those. I can't tell you for sure. However, I've seen some of the other manufacturers that will not function with that ammunition. So this thing, it runs it.
just about ready to wrap it up. But before we do that, I gotta do the people's work. This is gonna be Winchester three inch Super X's. These are slugs, these are deer loads. Um, if you're not familiar with deer slugs, they kick a lot. They kick a heck of a lot more than any of your reduced recoil slugs from law enforcement stuff. But this gun is rated for three inch shells. We're gonna shoot these through here, have about five of them. Uh, they, like I said, they recoil a lot. You'll see it. It's good for you guys to see though, because you're gonna be able to see what that recoil cycle looks like from a three inch Magnum like these are. So we'll shoot those and close her out. Five rounds, three inch deer slug. For as crappy as those are to shoot in general, really not all that bad through this shotgun. Uh, it, you can see I was able to throw let's say all five rounds of that into the A zone shooting three inch magnums at let's say 30 feet and it's easy to do. I, this gun it shoots really well, functioned flawlessly, a little over 100 rounds here on the range today. It's cold, took it out through a little bit of rem oil on it. Um, if you're not familiar with some of these shotguns like this, just a light coat of rem oil is really all you need on your Benelli's, Berettas, and Franchis. And this thing's no exception. It's a fantastic shotgun, looks awesome, shoots awesome, functions flawlessly, and overall, the absolute best tactical shotgun you can possibly buy for your hard-earned dollar. But until next time, like, comment, and subscribe.